is up, Dama Nerds? We're back again with episode 18. It is August 11th at 12.30 Japan time in the 12th year of Sander. How you doing, MJ? You got, you all know MJ's here with me. You got the yo, yo, Always. What's Dama up? Nerd MJ is here, ready and psyched for episode 1-8 because we have a special guest. Another, dude, back-to-back guest. Back to back. This is a first guests. for. Uh, you know what? Is it? Wait, wait, wait. Would that be three times back to back special guest? Because we got the KWC episode, which had like a oh, gang of people. Actually, technically, right? yeah. Yeah, like thirteen, and then plus like thirty later oh, yeah, on. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> and then our last episode with Josh Flowgrove. And Josh. this time we have Austin yeah. Donovan. Oh yeah. Coming in. From What's the up, East nerds? Coast. What is up, Austin? Thanks for hanging out with What's us up? today. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for having we, me. We... Hell yeah. On the last episode with Josh, we were talking about KWC stuff, and we were talking about how uh, Austin put together all these crazy stats of people doing witch tricks and how that works and shit like that. So we figured, I think we talked about, we actually made like a semi half ass promise that you'd be on this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're yeah, fulfilling it right now. Here we are. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Exactly. Dominators follow through. So so there's yeah, always a lot of, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that happens during KWC, and I think a lot of people kind of overlook a few things where this time Austin really sat down, put his uh, fucking thinking cap on, his nerd goggles on as well, and sat down and, and took some notes that I think a lot of people took, uh, you know, attention to. I think, well, Austin, you posted on your story. In Instagram. So, yeah, I put it on my story. And then, uh, yeah, Sweets hit me up. Or Cody, who I assume was running the account at the time. He usually does. And he was like, yo, can we put this on our page? And I was like, absolutely, yeah. And then they put it on their IGTV. So I'm sure a lot more people saw it there than on my uh, story. But it it definitely had some reach. I had a lot of people hitting me up, asked me about it. Asked me to send them pictures of what I wrote down so other people could kind of give some input. Which, uh, yeah, anybody else listening to it after you do hear what I have to say, please give input. I would love to hear this because I'm sure there are a lot of you guys that are a lot better with numbers and statistics. Right, right. We, right. So far, we only have <laughs> one scientist doing all the work, Austin. And if any other scientists are out there <laughs> wanting to give their take on the whole thing, that's what we're going to get into today. But first, let, let's go over some uh, current events. Uh, it is just yesterday, yeah. so it's August 11th over here. Uh, in future Japan, Austin, sorry, we'll tell you what it's like when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yesterday was the Den Dama Cup. Now, I don't know if, how well everybody Cup. knows about Den Dama. Probably, you know, if, if uh, people follow probably yeah, the it. hashtag of um, Ken Dama hashtags, you, you see, but you see Den yeah. Dama. We talked about it in the past, too. I am personally not a yeah. fan of the Den Dama. Yeah. I voice that because it's like it's it's still a kendama you know, and it's just a shitty plastic one. So what's the point, right? Yeah, I I gave it a I good a shot yesterday, man, and I thought you know like I've been practicing because this dendama cup thing and there is a huge cash prize yeah. for it. So the winner, if you guys never saw that, took home two million <sighs> Japanese yen, which is twenty thousand dollars. About yeah, yeah. currency. So like, uh, it's about nineteen, but still huge. Yeah, Huge. yeah, but still close enough to twenty. It's a lot yeah. of money. It's the most money anybody has ever won in Kendama, at to date. And the winner, more than and the winner Cup was Cup. Nonoka, none other. Nonoka coming up from yes, yes, she fucking destroyed. It was actually insane. Man, I was so hyped that she just, when she won against uh, Yutaro Fukushima. Oh yeah, the guy. yeah, yeah. yeah. Who is the, the yep. last champ? Mm-hmm. Dude, you should have seen all the like local homies were just like, yeah, like just jumping around. Fucking, it was it was like Nobu and Tani and those kids. Yeah, and it was yeah, fucking yeah. Sick. And she beat him so like by one fucking second. There's like a oh, time thing, and it was shit. by like mm-hmm. or, it was less than a second. It was like point three of a second. So and, how did how did the yeah, competition yeah. go? So the way it worked. So the preliminary rounds were bullshit. Which was <laughs> where, where I got fucked was in the preliminary <laughs> rounds because there were so many people that there wasn't actually judges for it. It was the judge was the Dendama. So basically, there's people who don't really know oh. Kendama just running three different booths and they had head to head battles yeah. and, and they had like it's like a speed ladder. So there's a list of what was it like 10 or 15 yep. tricks and 
that list is randomly generated. Like this one comes, and then the first player to hit that trick gets a point. And then you only have like, I think it's a minute or 45 seconds in, per round kind of thing. And so whichever trick comes up, you have to do that one before the other person does it. And then you get a point. And then at the end of that time limit, the, whoever has the most points so wins. So you're not the round. going at the same time trying to beat the time? We are oh, going at the same, at the same time. time. Okay, okay. Yes. Yes. But the thing is, is it's a fucking dendama. Yeah. So, like, if you if you catch it on a lighthouse, you have to wait for the, the cups light up yep, green to register once it, it yeah. detects that it's doing. Yeah. And so you have to, like, figure this shit out, you know? Like, and I've been mm -hmm. practicing with the dendama, but, like, not a whole lot. And, like, I haven't been using the app most. I've just been right, playing right, with right. it, you know? Yeah. And. Fuck me, dudes. And not only that, but like, I also was the only foreigner. The only foreigner. Yeah. And everything's come on, Japanese, outsiders. Right? So all the Damn trick names James. come up in Japanese, and like, fuck, I can read it, but like, I'm obviously way slower than right, everybody right, right. else. So like, I'm sitting here yeah. trying to read Japanese and then do this trick before these other people who have been oh, reading man. Japanese come on. their whole fucking lives. You didn't, and you didn't have like, Den Kota? one of the kids I went up against, he literally only plays Dendama. He doesn't play Kendama, only Dendama. This kid. But that's what. I, I know. I just want to see how it plays because I've played other plastic Kendamas and they are garbage. Yeah, I mean, I'd like not... to assume that this one's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. Yeah, it's like really slick for stalls and shit. It loons pretty good. Like it's got a nice yeah, paint Tama, on it. Yeah. But the bevel is just slick as right. fuck. It's just plastic on yeah. plastic. So and the only just... plastics I've played were like the old chameleon LEDs. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had one of those. Which are fun to play with, but Hell, not yeah, good for, for a little exactly. while. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was how the prelims worked, and then there was three. Everybody had three rounds, and they counted your points per round. I don't really know how the point system worked, but it was like if you had <laughs> six the way they points, then you, you went on. <laughs> don't tell the dude, outsider how know, it really. I didn't works, even know it was a speed ladder, dude. Like I literally thought it was all the head-to-head -head, like Ken game style. Yeah, yeah. Until like five That's minutes. That's what it before. looked like when I saw. And then it, yeah. somebody told me it was a speed uh... thing. And once I found out it was a speed thing, I was like, fuck, well, I got to make sure I know what all these tricks right, are. Right. Like, I like, because it's all in kanji yeah. and shit. It's like, it's not even the easy to read Japanese. Right. It's you didn't have shit. Kota? So I I'm had to assuming. make sure. You didn't have Kota, like, sitting Sorry? over your shoulder, helping you out? Kota was doing other shit, but the one, he was there for one round. <laughs> yeah. Trying to help Damn. me out. When, like, I did a trick and the fucking Den Dawn didn't register. Right, right. It, He's like, no, no, do it again, do it again. Um,. So is this yeah. the same way they competed last year as well, or is this a whole I, new format? I'm not sure. I think so. It's just using the games that are built into the app, basically. Yeah. And so okay. another cool part about this was the reason they had this event um, yesterday and shit was it's the opening of this new Dendama yeah. bar that they put in Shibuya, right above the Shibuya yeah, the crossing. Scramble. Like this big, cr the craziest intersection in the whole world. Like, it's fucking insane. Yeah. Wow. And it's right there. There's a big light up Kendama on the side of this building you can see now, and it's a darts and Dendama bar and they have craft beer and shit so there's a bunch of darts and there's a couple little like arcade style like big screen TVs with four Dendamas yeah. that are sitting there always charging but you can pull the charger off oh man too bad it. it isn't fucking Turtles and Ninjas and the fucking Ninjas in Time Turtles in Time the Turtles in Time <laughs> man if I it want. was I would I'd four still player. be there man <laughs> little Simpsons fucking X-Men four yeah. player see Hell that's yeah. what I want fucking Dendama four player what <laughs> that that for sure yep. exists in Tokyo somewhere. Me, it's, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where, yeah, but it for yeah. sure does. There's a I game be, they got it. Yeah, I would be like infinitely surprised <laughs> if you couldn't find that somewhere in Tokyo. So, but but uh, yes. anyways, back to the so Dendama. So that thing event. is crazy so, how they opened up in this cool yeah, the spot, spot that that bar. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe that they opened like this spot is has to be. I'm so, so exactly when I first yeah. heard that Otani San was opening that shit up, and I'm like in Shibuya, I'm like, what the fuck in Shibuya? Damn. And then I saw the location. Yeah. And I was like, "No way!" They're like right in the scramble. Like that's got to be so expensive. And I'm like, "He's Super like expensive. they're making that much money selling the dendama." Yeah, like is dendama killing it? I, that much I in don't Japan? think because so. Because over so, here in America, and like I don't <laughs> see how they're doing because you can't buy them as far as I know in America. You have to. I don't think you can buy them because they're still really working on it and shit. So like the English portion of the app is kind of garbage still. It's yeah. like it's there. But a lot of the trick names really don't make sense, and, like, it's just bad in a lot of ways. So, like, yeah. All right. So, but, yeah, it's kind of weird, but it's, I mean, like, the English is there. So, like, you can Even still play still, it. Even still, though, like, English living in shit. Japan, seeing people uh, playing Ken Dendama and it being advertised just online and stuff, like, I don't think 
many people buy it. But then again, when I go out to Kenjama events, no, no one's going to take out their Dendama and just play that, right? It's that's connected true. just yeah. for the app. I think yeah. from my I feel understanding, like that's more of like yeah. a home thing. But so yeah, is yeah, Kendama. No. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, so from my understanding, um, Dendama doesn't necessarily sell a shit ton of Dendamas. Yeah. That's not where their money comes from, but they do have a lot of investors. Yeah, yeah. So they have yeah. a lot of people willing to invest in their company because they think that in the future they can put more into it and make it a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like, I met one of the dudes that invested in the bar itself, like not just in Dendama, but in the okay. bar. And he's like a, like a darts, I don't know if he's actually pro, but we're making jokes how like I'm a pro Kendama player, he's the darts okay. pro. <laughs> okay, So yeah. I think he, I think he's a pro darts player, I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Is that a player, a thrower, like a darts pro? Yeah, I don't fucking, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. A darter. A darter. He's a pro dart. <laughs> He's a fucking dart bud. <laughs> he is the dart. <laughs> yeah. But I was talking to him about it, and uh, he just thought that it was a good idea, and so he thought he'd invest in it, basically Whoa. is what he told me. And so, yeah, they have a lot of investors throwing money, and that's why they were able to have the spot and give away fucking 20 right. grand. And that was just first prize. Like, second prize was 10 yeah, grand. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Third prize was like three hundred bucks, and up to fifteenth place you got. Money. Oh shit! Fifteenth place wow. got like five thousand yen, I think it was. How many people made it past past prelims? I don't remember. I want to say sixteen or eighteen, because it was like a, a tournament bracket style. Whoa. So after prelims, it was like a one on one style on the stage. Oh, okay. And they did instead of like the time attack shit, like they did in the prelims, which was fucking whack as fuck. <laughs> they did like this Ken Ken game thing. So basically, you can choose any trick off the list you want of, okay. of tricks. There's up to level 16 they go. And like the level 16 trick is like stilt over the valley, swap under bird Whoa, over the no valley. Well, no way with the dendama. No, no, no spike. Yeah, but with the mm. dendama, it's fucking hard. Um, and so basically the way it works is it's kind of like a Ken game, but it's reversed. So you have like four like little hearts on each side for player one, player two. And you get four hearts, okay, like okay. four yeah, lives. Yeah, yeah. So it's more like Dama, I guess, than Kang. He got four instead of three. But uh, you basically you choose a trick, and if I choose a trick, and you go, and so if if I do it first, and then you do it as well, I lose a point because you did it. So I lose one of my hearts. Okay. So you're trying to choose tricks that you can do, but also that the other person can't do because if they do your trick, that's you interesting. Lose it. Yeah, it's very that's interesting. It changes up. it a little bit, right? It's a different dynamic. Yeah, that's a, a lot very yeah. strategic. I guess it's yeah. like a video game. And so But that's fucked up. I remember yeah, like when totally. I play Ken games with people, I make sure I'm like, wait, can you do like gunslinger? Like, do you know how to do that? Because yeah. I don't want one, yeah, I don't absolutely. want to be an asshole. And two, like I want to kind of challenge yeah. them. If like if like uh, every once in a while I can do it, I was like, okay, I'll challenge you and do it. If they have no yeah. idea how to do it, then it's just like I'm that's that's cheating, I think. I'm just gonna swipe mm, a point off of yeah. them. Yeah, hundred percent. It's the same but, thing as it like for like yeah. when I play Ken, like I almost don't enjoy playing Ken as much when it's not in like a competition setting because my style of play is mainly stuff that people don't right, normally right. do. Exactly. So like I'm almost yeah. like dumbing down my style yeah. to play Ken, which is also another reason why I do want to get to Van Jam one year because then yes. no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was going to say, too, with, like, the Dendama thing, it's, there's also $20,000 on the line, so, like, you know, like, you're going to put me in there and give me 20 grand if I win? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do some greasy <laughs> shit. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not Probably sorry. Not. You know, you're like, like but that being said, money. you're not choosing your trick. Like, you don't get to say, like, I want to do this weird shit that's not, like, it's, it's all tricks that are with, like, programmed into the yeah. Dendama so that it knows what you're doing kind of thing. So, like, some of the weirder ones are, like, hanging lighthouse, hanging one turn lunar, they're pretty pretty basic yeah, tricks. Yeah. Like, but that being said, a dendama is not easy to do these tricks on. So, yeah, there is that. One of the tricks, man. Yeah, this is this was epic. So, um, I'm gonna finish the format thing first. Oh, yeah, so yeah. there's the Ken game thing, and then after that, there's another game they played called Count Up, I think, or Count Down. I think it's Count Up. All right. But basically, it's it. the same thing. You choose your you choose your tricks beforehand. It's like five or ten tricks each or whatever, and you go back and forth doing the tricks and it gives you 30 seconds for each okay, trick. Okay. And if I do my, if I do the trick in three seconds, and like if I do it first try, and you do it, it takes you the full 30 seconds, then you get 30 seconds added to your time, and you're behind by that 30 seconds. Oh. And it's whoever has, 
It's kind of like a chess clock kind of style in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the Dama Blitz kind okay, of shit. Okay, okay, right, right. A little bit, but different. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So so that that was the it was those two and then they had a speed ladder thing at the end if there wasn't a clear winner I think I don't think they did it oh, every time. Word. But this is where it got epic. So in the finals, it was Nonoka and Rudy, two girls, which I was hyped on. Def, like a definite girl champion was kind of yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so they went and Nonoka won whatever. But then they made this announcement and they were like, actually, sorry, the Dendama actually fucked up. And so in oh, the time clock oh, one, uh, there was a trick that Rudy did that it, it accidentally added 30 seconds to her time. So she was behind by 56.2 seconds in the end, but it actually shouldn't have been oh, that okay, much. okay, okay, okay. And so there, and there was still two tricks left, so she still could have oh, won if she did those tricks. Gotcha. First T and Nonoka yeah. fucked up, then she could have right, won, right. right? But basically the trick was Lunar Tray Flip. And um, so basically, Nonoka had to get up on stage. They both got up on stage, but Nonoka had to get up and do Lunar Tray Flip within that 30 seconds, or else there would be the next trick. And then if she didn't do that in that 30 seconds and Ruri did, then Ruri probably could have won. Whoa. Yeah. So it was like kind of close. Gotcha. But what happened was every- everybody's like, yeah, Nonoka won. It's all sick. Oh, actually, sorry, shit. Oh, we <laughs> fucked up. We got to go again. Okay, yeah, yeah, whatever. We're all ready to go again. Everyone's hyped. Because people were confused as to how she won, yeah. right? So it was yeah. a weird thing. Yeah, I mean, from the... Yeah. From, but from then, someone's... then, she gets on stage and... Sorry, sorry. But then she gets on stage and she just first tees the fucking inward lunar tray. Just boom. And it's just there like, oh, go. I'm sorry. Did you not think I was the champion? Oh, Fuck shit. you. Oh, <laughs> shit. Like, it was Love savage, it. dude. It. it was savage Damn. as fuck. I was so hyped. I remember seeing, yeah, someone uh, uh, posting up on, on IG that how like she she got the trick and everyone's like kind of half clapping and then she's like kind of confused and it seemed like everyone was like wait 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 something happened it's good that they had tech yeah. people there to say to find out that wait wait there was a fuck up with the dendama we yeah. still need more money to make it better so please uh <laughs> please invest, invest here, here. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that they could you know take it back a step and be like, all right, let's do it. So she actually wins, which yeah, she just come out. Yeah. Come out. Did it. Yeah. It was sick. Learning process. Was everything I got to right. say though, that was really cool. And the Dendama bar is cool and all that shit. But the highlight of the whole Dendama event was the fact that motherfucking Matt Ballard made an appearance. Straight up. Wow. Just out of nowhere. Yeah. Wow. Wow. He was, uh, he hit me up actually like last week and asked me if I was going to be in Tokyo oh, anytime yeah. this week. And I was like, well, yeah, cause I'm actually leaving. Like m- tomorrow morning is my flight. Like I leave in fucking this time tomorrow, I'll already be in fucking Manila waiting for my flight, hating my life. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. So like I'm fucking Matt Ballard showed up. That is sick. so, I haven't seen him in think- forever. The craziest thing is, I think he lives in Brooklyn. Now. Oh, does he? Yeah, he lives in New York. I t- I told him that we yeah. were going to be recording here, and I told him he should hit you up. Yeah, I've, I've hit him up a couple times, but he's super busy. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, he travels a lot. He said he travels a couple times a month Man. at least to do shoot yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. And he, uh, he's killing it though. Totally. Oh yeah, yeah. He's super, he was showing me some stuff he was working on in Tokyo. It looks yeah, sick. but that is so amazing. As, was as, now so yeah. he is you know pretty OG like the three of us but like legendary with the videos that he was putting out and yeah absolutely what was the were people like going crazy when he walked in at the dendama bar there was some people like the older dudes that like know him one of the dudes uh utah uh he fucking wore his wkt shirt just because he heard about <laughs> shit and like he like Probably every fucking thirty minutes or so, they would come up to me and they like, "Did you see Ballard yet? Is he here? Oh yeah, is he here? Is he still coming?" <laughs> and I was like, "I don't know, man. I, he told me right. a week ago yeah. he was coming. That's like that's all I know." And, and of course, crazy, though. he like, was a little late, so it was everyone was just kind of like, <laughs> "Like I've talked to a couple friends before, and like we have this like East Coast Konama group chat that's like not full East Coast, but kind of like tri-state area, which is New York, New Jersey, Connecticut." Yep. And, uh, like, one of my friends was just, like, he started to realize that, like, not as many people that he thinks have seen, like, count me in and stuff like that. So we put in the group chat, like, yo, who has seen this movie? And, like, literally there were, like, a few of us out of, like, 30 of us. And me and him were like, this is a problem. This This is is a real problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is one kind of a 
And, like, that, I feel like there almost needs to be, like, a history lesson where if you're starting to, like, get seriously into Kendama, go watch this, go watch this, go Absolutely. watch that. Make sure you know who Colin Sander is. Yeah, et cetera, yeah. Et cetera. It's like starting... And that's and that's why we give out the Dumb Nerds homework. So there's your fucking homework, nerds. Go watch Count Me In. Count Check Me In. Absolutely. And when where you're done are. with that, watch Where We Are. You get extra oh, credits fuck. for next fucking episode. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those... That's yeah, a whole dude. night right oh, there. Oh, man. Hell that yeah. is, that is... Invite your friends over. Watch yeah. it. It's <laughs> totally. long enough. <laughs> it is long so enough. So were there, were there plenty of people who didn't know? Who were like, oh, all these people like flipping out. There were out. people, yeah. I was, like, I was hanging out with them, of course, walking around. And then like there'd be like some of the younger kids like were there. Like Noah and Yasu, like the nine-year-olds yeah, yeah, yeah. and shredders and shit. And they were all like coming over. And I'm like, oh, do you know who this guy is? And they're just oh, like. nice to meet you. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> You you have no idea who you're standing in front of, oh, man. man. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> so then I That's told them and shit. Like, so yeah. Funny. And thank you for the twelfth year of Colin Sander thing because that is one name where like if you play Kendama, you need to know he is, who he is because if you're in yes. America, he is the reason why you are playing Kendama, whether yeah. you know it or not. Exactly. Straight up letting it out, you know, putting it on online and shit when almost nobody was in the in yep. the North America outside of japan that's like when i started playing kendama like i would literally remember going on youtube typing in kendama and there literally being not even two full pages of videos on yeah and like half of them were calling (laughs) so i think he released edit four like a week or two before i got my first kendama Mm. and then five came out soon later and that was like the best day of my life (laughs) edit five is here (laughs) yeah dude yes oh it was amazing. I actually yeah. have edit six on DVD too. If you don't know, uh, so if you go online, there's one through five on YouTube, and then seven is also on YouTube. But edit mm. six is like a secret edit. So when Kendama USA was kind of starting to you know gain traction and get bigger, they made a yeah. DVD, which was like how to string your Kendama. Here's yeah. like how to play. Here's the grips, and in the bonus footage of that DVD was Whoa. edit six, and I have that DVD. Wasn't that the only place you could watch it too? Like they didn't the release it online. The only place you could watch it, and yeah. nobody had nobody that has it has ripped it and put it online. Oh, shit. So Epic. I think it's it's like a true relic, and I always say like I want to bring it to like Minnesota or whatever, and like have like yeah. a viewing. Dude, of yes, six. yes, dude, that would sure be sure most epic. people have not that, seen. That's, it. That would be epic yeah. as fuck. Keep it offline. Keep it. That's yeah, sick. rare. That's really funny. Like you mentioned that you have like a little Kendama DVD collection kind of thing because. For those of you listening, if you, if you <laughs> right. haven't heard the other ones, I, I don't well, know this, this is what I'm yeah. getting at. Uh, Austin recently won our break shit contest we had on yes, yes. right? So mm-hmm. I put together a little, little. well, MJ also sent me some stuff for you. So we have a little package that I fucking don't have it with me. It's downstairs. Okay, but, but, you, I'll, but I'll, you have I'll, it I can, with should you. Should I tell you what's in it? Or is it a better surprise? <laughs> you, you, you could tell me about the DVD, so which I'm, I'm sure is in there, but yeah, keep, yeah. keep the rest of the surprise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... There's a bunch of shit, but the DVD is a Catch and Flow DVD oh, that was yes. filmed after the first Catch and Flow in 2014. Yes. Wow. Um, I don't, have you guys heard of this? Did you I guys have see this because ever? I remember I, I, it was only sold in uh, like Tower Records after Catch and Flow because they had a, a, yeah. a little mini event before Catch and Flow at Tower Records. Yeah. And Rod, you were there. I remember because after Catch and Flow, like I was hanging out like with a bunch of people going to like Kipios one night and everyone's like, where's this person? Where's yeah. that person? Like, Oh, they're still filming. And there was a crew that went out with everyone, uh, with, with, with the Kenko yeah, crew. Was, that was yeah, the, epic, the Krom dude. crew. They was, filmed everyone. It wasn't just Kenko and Krom though. We everyone, were all mixed right? yeah, up. Yeah. In like different groups. So it's basically the filmed. DVD has like two parts, yeah. right? Yeah. And the, the one part is the actual event from the, the first catch and flow. And like like footage of the event, and then the other part yeah. is like all of us went in groups of like four. Yeah. I think it was my group was me, Bonds, Chris Bosch, and Sweets. I think that yeah. was it. Group. Yeah, dude. We and we like that's a, that's a group right there. Th- what it was was they wanted to, they had some spots kind of figured out, and they wanted to take us out and get like three tricks each or something like that. And so we went to like we had back like back entrance passes to Tower Records in Shibuya and like Sweets was filming on the escalator and shit nice. in there and like but, but we all fucking filmed our group was we banged our shit out within like an yeah. hour. It was fucking sick. We were just like boom 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 sick, let's go get some beers. Yeah. Next group please. <laughs> like it was fucking awesome. Come by. But th- there were some people that got kind of fucked because like it took a little long and like I remember I think it was Jake's group. 
uh, Jake Weens, he was saying that it was like getting pretty dark when they were filming, and like he had some stuff he wanted to do but couldn't because it's dark and shit, and it's kind of like, eh, yeah, it sucks. But you know, we only have today with it was the Red Bull filming crew. Like they they, they usually film like yeah. Red Bull shit, so they were legit have like these like, uh, what do you call it? Like fast motion cameras, slow yeah, motion yeah. cameras, and like yeah. they had like three three cameras at once filming one trick. Like it was it's it, yeah. cool. It's definitely like it's really overproduced in the video. The slow motion and shit is really funny, but like, it's <laughs> it's worth a watch. It's cool, and like the background music is super like Japanese, like techno y. Like, <laughs> it's super Love fucking it. funny. You're, you're you're gonna get a kick out of it. <laughs> so, I'll be yeah, excited yeah. for that. Yeah, so now you got the Kendama collection, box. right? <laughs> yeah, the rest there will keep it right. There's some things I wanted to put in the box, but like you know, like I know you love those ice cream things that everybody loves here. I'd love to send you one of those, but I don't think it's that's not a good last. idea. You know, the only thing you got to watch out for is that but. the the DV, It's a DVD, not a Blu-ray. It's a DVD. It's uh, a DVD. the region is yeah. going to be different in the in. Oh uh, no, it's it's chill. Is it's it? chill. I have I've I've played mine oh, in Canada. Word? Oh, okay, yeah. well there you go. Ooh, one funny little thing in that DVD thing though is like when you open it up, the case looks like an uh like a an, a MacBook. So like the bottom has like the four like pads kind of thing, and the top it doesn't have an yeah. Apple logo. But when you open it up, it looks like a laptop. There's like a keyboard and shit. And so behind the disc, where you take the disc out, there's like a screen, and it has all these little windows open and shit. And if you look at that, there's some fucking interesting. There's some porn on there and shit, and some weird like <laughs> it's fucking fun. what on the on the Catch and Flow DVD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, it's like it's like this big, like it's tiny. <laughs> it's like the size of a fucking pin, like. But it's there. You'll see it. You'll see. Oh, it. You're gonna man. laugh. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a good one. Another uh, screen. Maybe Hell another yeah. screening you can do uh, over uh, in the East Coast. Maybe an event or something, Austin. Yeah, it'd be a good one. Absolutely. I was just gonna say to. Uh, I had just announced. I haven't put together the official flyer or the details yet, but if you are in or around the East Coast or have time to travel, Beast of the East is our annual New York Kendama event that will be yeah. happening on September 21st in Washington Square Park nice. in Manhattan. For more details to come very soon, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll get together after that, watch it at 6, watch uh, this Catch and Flow DVD. Fun yeah. stuff. It's all about Hells yeah, hells yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I, we've been nerding out uh, pretty good. Let's nerd out even deeper. Let's fucking open the can of worms. <coughs> of uh, yeah, jump into some of numbers. all the other numbers, the statistics, all the crazy facts that Austin took down while watching catch and uh, not catch and flow. Ken Dama World Cup 2019. <laughs> now, Austin, yeah, give us out. the whole rundown. What first sparked? your mind to start taking notes so so what happened was was obviously we're watching the world cup i was at my friend roger's house and you know we're watching the world cup and as the runs are going it's like every other year there was like a definitive winner like last year when nick won yeah. we knew nick won the year yeah. before when so won we pretty we yeah. knew so won this year we had no idea who won so like yeah. i was i think the people that i thought might have won were rui nick mati uh tomoki and nobu so we were all like, it might be one of those five. And then there were a few other names thrown in there that like he said too, that like we weren't, we really yeah. didn't know who won. Mm -hmm. And then the top five started coming out and it came down to Nick and Rui. And we look at each other and we were like, holy shit, Nick oh, won again. Oh shit. <laughs> and then they called it and Rui won. And we were like, yo, what? How did yeah. that just happen? And then we went back and rewatched Rui's run. And even after watching it, we were like, how did he win? Like what happened? What yeah, went yeah. down there? Yeah. So then the next day I had off and, you know, I wanted to just rewatch the World Cup anyway because I it's fucking love Kendama. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, and like I'm, you know, I was like baseball was my first love and baseball is very statistical. And so like even like I have a group chat with my friends that are like Yankee fans and we like send each other just random weird stats all the time. And like, we, you know, we just enjoy yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, statistical analysis like is very crucial in the evolution of kendama and becoming a sport. And there is currently none of that. So someone kind of had to like start and do it. And I figured I was like, I'm I love numbers. Uh, you know, I have a degree in math. Oh shit! And uh, I love kendama. So I was like, let me sit down and do this because it's not yeah. like work for me. It's like fun. Like I actually want to yeah, see this yeah. stuff. So uh, like yeah, nobody better suited. <laughs> Yeah, so what I had noticed was, like, I wrote down essentially uh, how many tricks each of those five that I had mentioned before, as well as uh, Maharu, because I did not think Maharu was in the top five, but he was fifth place, I believe. Was he fifth but place? So, uh, yeah. I think so. 
But so, yeah, I very close to it. But so, yeah, I wrote down how many tricks each person did, what each one of those five or six people did, what level the trick was, like... How like wh- like what tricks they landed in minute one, minute two, minute three, and kind of okay. just looked at that and like. So what I saw was like one of the most the craziest things I also did with Nick's run last year, and so Nick last year landed twenty three tricks. Total, right? That's a lot of tricks. Yeah, total. And this year Rui landed thirteen, Whoa. and he had thirteen oh eight compared to Nick's fourteen forty seven last year. If it was the same scoring as this year with the bonus points, Nick would have got fifteen oh seven. So we'd have scored 200 more points than Rui doing 10 more tricks, but that's kind of just one more trick because a level 12 is worth almost 200 points. Exactly. So yeah. Nick landed 10 more tricks last year, but didn't win by a huge yeah. margin. Mm. And then even this year, I saw Rui had only landed 13 tricks compared to Nick's 18 and still beat him by, okay. you know, 68 right, right, points. Right. So it's not mm-hmm. all about, yeah. And so I was point. thinking, like, the thing that, like, the the mindset that has gone into the World Cup every year for like the people that are like the top tier competitors is like let me go in there let me lace a bunch of lower level tricks get myself in this zone and then start adding on some like higher level tricks to like stack yeah. my points up yeah and Rui was like nah fuck that he had literally two his first three tricks were level six and two level sevens after that every single trick he landed was level eight or higher damn and so like what I realized was that like so Nick's first uh, like 30 seconds, he was eight for eight. He did not miss a trick. And in that, in that point, in that first 30 seconds, he had scored 241 nice. points. And what one thing I had kind of noticed too is that, so say a fair number is like, you need about 450 points per minute in your three minute run to win the World Cup, which would give you about 1350, which is kind of in between the winner from yep. this year and last year. So 1350, you, you have a good shot at winning, which would be mm-hmm. 450 trip points Whoa. per minute. And so if he landed eight out of eight of his tricks in 30 seconds, 100% success rate, and that gave him 241. So if he were to do that the whole time and land 16 out of 16 tricks in one minute, that would have been 482, which is just over 450. But if you look at, say, like like Rui's last 23 seconds, he got 345 points with two tricks. Okay, okay, yeah. And so, like, watching Nick's run, like, it's, it's almost hard to say, like, Nick may have genuinely had a more skillful yeah. run this year you know but just mm. the way that the scoring is and the tricks that he chose to do didn't give yeah. him the points mm. and uh yeah so like another thing too is just like everybody says like oh you need to you everybody want to uh lee i brought this up too because like in my in my uh, little story i was like oh so these level of tricks they're useless they're useless i mean they're not completely useless it was a little uh, <laughs> over exaggerated but so everybody says like you want to get into this hone zone, you know, lace a couple tricks and then start banging out the bigger ones. But if you go in with the mindset where like, I don't need to land tricks in succession. I just need to do this trick within 20 seconds, this trick within 20 seconds. You don't really need to be Mm. as honed, Hmm. you know? And you could see in Nick's run too, even then he did those first eight, he, his first eight tricks, he landed a hundred percent of the first eight tricks. And then after that he missed a lot. So he got himself in that hone zone and it just, it just left. And then it came back during like the last minute, during the third minute, he scored 627 points, which yeah. is 170, 200, or whatever number higher than the 450 that you kind of need to yeah, right, right, get right. to that level. Yeah. But yeah, even then too, like, uh, so like I did like the success rate. So Rui in his run, he uh, landed 13 out of 36 of his tricks and Nick landed 18 of 40. So Rui had a 36% success rate and Nick had 45. So Nick landed wow. more of the tricks yeah, that yeah. he attempted, but still mm-hmm. didn't have as high as a score because his a lot of his tricks were level fours level fives level sixes which yeah. realistically like are they worth it you know yeah especially when you're that high level of a kendama player like what's a level eight compared to a level four you know if you're that yeah. good those tricks are kind of like first try tricks you know and it's just a matter of do totally. you land it at that exact moment you know and it's like is it really worth it to put in that time grinding those lower level tricks? Like, and like I said, like it does help to get you in that little zone, but Rui just did three of them. Level six, level seven, level seven. Good. Go. Yeah. Go for the big so he stuff. just took a huge risk. And it, and it because, worked. Because, I mean, if Rui didn't hit a few, like those last two, three tricks, like he wouldn't have the top spot. He just. Oh yeah. That yeah. was, that was like the most clutch thing that has ever happened in Kendama, that he literally put up 345 points in the last 23 yeah. seconds. I think That's it, insane. He, yeah. Like I did, I did. A, so if you think of like yeah. points per second, he had essentially what is it? In the last twenty three seconds, he had fifteen points per second. Whoa! And if he had 
15 points per second for his entire run, he would have had more than 2,700 Whoa. points. Damn. Yeah. He- and, like, I don't know if that is actually genuinely attainable to do that many tricks that quick, that high level. But, I mean, I mean you know, yeah. it it's is possible. Definitely possible, yeah. So I have a question yeah. for you. So how much – this year was the first time they had the, like, bonus points for the 11, 11s and 12s and shit. So how big of a role did those play? Did they hit a lot of those high-level tricks or oh, did, was it more they? like 10s and 9s so, and 8s? Yeah. So, so Rui, I'll, I'll go real quick through his tricks. He landed 13 tricks. In order, there was a 6, 7, 7, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8, 9, 11, 9, 11, 12. Hmm. But even oh. another thing that I did was I took, like, trick value. So, like, I, I essentially took how much points the trick is worth mm-hmm. and divided it by how long it takes to do it. And I just went off of, like, the video, the World Cup videos. Yeah, yeah. So, say, it's crazy, too, because, so, say, like, I did tricks from level 8 to 12, and the trick with the highest trick value was a level 10. It was the trip sling, jug, lay, oh. trip sling. Uh, and that yeah, takes yeah. you about 1.5 seconds to get 100 points, which gives you a trick value of 66.6 repeated. Mm. Nerd and hard. even like, so uh, the highest trick value trick in level 12 was Liad's trick yeah, yeah. for level 12, which was 64.6 repeated. And that was one of the only level 12s that was attempted right, all right, day. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it was like people kind of have that idea of like this is the better trick to do, this is the better trick to do, but like mm. this is like proof, you know. And that's also mm. another thing. So like when I was filming like the trick that I did, the uh, Inward Lunar Spike Tap, Inward Lunar, the level 8, like that was a trick yeah. I wanted to do. I wanted to do a quick trick that you could just – it's one motion, yep. pull it up to Lunar, do your trick, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and like that's just a quick trick. It's worth a lot. And yeah, but like there are tricks. So say like in level 10 – there are one, two, three, four tricks that have a trick value of more than like thirty-three, and in level twelve, there's only two. Like there, like oh, there okay, are okay. more level tens that are worth more than a level twelve because the level twelve is genuinely yes, take longer. Yes. Mm. So almost, so oh, yeah, almost like, reverse that's of what you were saying, how those low-level tricks are worthless. Maybe those super high-level tricks are worthless. Yeah, I mean, some of them are worth a lot, but, like, say, uh, so Nick Gallagher's trick, the crazy inward lunar insta whatever, Yeah, yeah. like, that trick only has a trick value of, say, 19.4. It takes you about 10 seconds to do that trick if you're not chasing yeah. balances. It takes you about 10 seconds to do it, and it's worth 194 right, right, right. points compared mm-hmm. to, say, Liad's, which takes you three seconds yes, to do it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Especially because Liad's trick, it was like, it was late, late, trade, trip, late, whatever. But it's like one trick, you know, and Nick's yeah. was like yes. a three-piece yeah, 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 trick, yeah, yeah. which makes it yeah. a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Whoa. But yeah, yeah like they're even like, they're even like level level eights that are like, so level eight, this is a crazy one. The uh, trip can juggle, trip can flip. Mm-hmm. That has a trick value of like 42.67. And that, again, is like there are only two level 12s that are worth more than that level eight. Wow. Mm. Because that trick... Trip can jug trip can that takes right, you right, a second right. one like a second and a half yeah super quick yeah, super quick and, and it gives you more attempts on that trick true, as well true. which yes, benefits yes, you yes. and I think exactly. that's what yeah, and then I was saying so uh so like the one of the like better stats that I kind of came up with that I think people should like look yeah. into next year is so uh, like I was saying trick value but like personal trick value and not how long it takes to land that trick but how long it takes you personally okay. to land that trick on average totally. you know so like a t- so, like, a 10 jug to spike could take you six or seven seconds if you landed on your first try. But, like, me sitting there doing it, am I going to land on my first try? On average, how long right. does it take me to do it? And yeah. it's not going off of success rate. It's going off of time because I could sit there and do one jug miss, one jug miss, one jug miss. Or I could do 10 juggles yeah. and miss a spike, and that's 10 yeah. times yeah. longer. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, like, yeah. figuring out, like, how long each trick takes you and comparing that to the trick value and seeing what is genuinely worth to put in your run. Mm. And so, like, next year, I'm already, like, itching for 2020 tricks to come out because I'm just going to run the trick yeah, values yeah. on every trick, throw them up, be like, Whoa. use this because I want to see people compete as good as they right, possibly right. can because this is opening a whole new way to compete at the World Cup. Straight up. Yeah, and, like, I was saying, too, to a couple other people, but, like, Everybody was like, why didn't people think to do this? Like, why were everybody going for the low-level tricks? And I think what it was, so when Bonds won in the first World Cup, he didn't do any level 10s. He did all yeah, low-level yeah. tricks. He just and slayed, he won. Like, so he set the pace for the rest uh, of the World Cups up uh-huh. until this year when Rui was like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to do <laughs> yeah. big shit. And yeah. won, and it worked. And, you know, and he also looked super, super chill on stage. You know, like, even he had his string get tangled up sometimes, and he's just like, meh, yeah. fix that, yeah. next trick. 
Yeah. Like, super just relaxed, and that's, you know, yeah, that's, I think that's huge. All, as well as, huge. uh, he's young. He's in middle school. He, it was his mm-hmm. first. How old is he? He's 15? I think 15. 16? I think he, man, I think he might be oh, younger. Shit, I was really? going to say 14 or 15. I don't uh, know for you sure. Know, you might be right. You might be right. Insane. So, I saw him yesterday. He was at the yeah, Dendama event. I, but I, so, one, he's young. Uh, so he is kind of, you know, willy nilly. Who cares? He's like, let's just do this. He has a great group of friends to play with. His skill level is really high, along with his friends, his group that he's always playing with. Uh, he's, again, young. He's, he's used to these new gen tricks. And yeah. he doesn't have anything to lose. He do, he's not like Nick. Where he's, Nick's like, I, I'm so want to win again. Back to back. Like, that would be so sick. Yeah. He's like, all right, so I'm going to play it safe. Where Dewey's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to go in and just yeah. try to hit these bangers. And if I do, let's see I'm what happens. Go there yeah, and do yeah. my best. Yeah, that's definitely a factor. I, I think a say. lot of people, yeah, sure. going into it, wanting to win, are going to go in with a safer uh, route and a safer way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, one of the people that also hit me up and asked for like the uh, stuff so they can kind of look at it was DeSoto. Mm. And what he came back to me with was that he noticed that, I believe, Rui's preliminary runs, he had scored 84 points. Yes. yes. And so, like I said, he landed he landed 13 tricks. Three of them were above level 10. Mm. So the 10 tricks that were under level 11 would have added up to 88 in a prelim. So he probably used those tricks in his preliminary run, didn't hit one of the 10s, and used a 6 as a backup to give him that score. So essentially what he may have done is literally just honed his prelim runs, got them on lock, and did those exact 10 tricks plus three other tricks that he wasn't allowed to do in prelims because they were level 11 and 12. So it's almost like to the point where, like, are you going to sit there and grind 30 potential tricks that you can possibly throw on your own and think, like, oh, what do I want to do now? i got to look down at your paper. Like, what am I doing? Or just... Pick your 10 tricks for your prelim runs and just yeah. hone those in and just continue to do them until they're clockwork. Hmm. And that seems like that's what he did. Right. And just yeah. run those 10 tricks plus three more high levels and that gave him the win. Secured his spot as the world Whoa. champion. Damn. Young, youngest? Yeah. Youngest so world champ? Yeah, there's so. a lot of youngins in, the whole, so. in, those, in those finals. I mean, we were just have we ever about, had a, we don't know how a World is, Cup but... winner? Have we ever had a World Cup winner that was 18 or over? Was uh, Bonds 18 was when he won? Bonds, I think, was 18 or 19. He's he's my age. So what was that, five years ago? It was 14. 2014. Yeah. yeah. 2014, so yeah, he would have been yeah. 19. Oh, mm-hmm. Bonzy. That's crazy, though. Even then, nobody 20 or over. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of people around our age that are sick at Kendama. It's true. But yeah, it's it's, it's, I just love seeing the youth just be so good. Dude, it's it just crazy. gets me excited for like just the future of Kendama. And just seeing kids like like uh who's it, Takuya and like Maharu Takuya, and yeah, like, kids yeah, like Takuya, that yeah. and like Kaito and like be like some of these kids I've been playing Kendama longer than they've been right. alive. And That's they're doing a, yeah. stuff that I can't <laughs> even comprehend. About that type of shit. Yeah, dude. I say that all the time. That's fucking oh my god, dude. It makes me crazy. It blows yeah. my mind. Well, it's like they just, yeah, they're man. going into it with no rules. In their brains that are set about yeah. what a kendama should be and and well i mean in in a way yeah. they do because they're living in japan and you know people know what a kendama is but this yeah. style of it mm-hmm. it's but a them, whole new world but them coming into Aladdin. it now versus when like we came into it even if we were younger when we came into it there's there was no resources there's yes. nothing to yes. show you anything yep. so for us it was a, a hill climb like you had to fucking figure out like, I remember, like, I've said this a million times, seeing Colin Sanders yeah, edit yeah. and being, like, seeing a lunar for the first time. I'm like, you can't like, oh, nope. do that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, like, that was going to say, too. Like, I remember seeing it. Might have, it was a spacewalk or a lightning drop. It was one of those two, but I think yeah. it was a spacewalk. And I remember seeing Zach Yord do, like, a spacewalk, one-turn lunar, and, like, shit my fucking yeah, pants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. And I was like, you can do that trick. You were the best Kendama right, player right, in the right. world. Yeah, dude. And now it's just, like, so when I was watching Kendama, you know, like, the highest level tricks were like beginner tricks yes. now, you know, and now yes. they have so much. So now they go on, they're like, let me watch Bonds. Let me watch Nick. And they're trying to yep, mimic yep. that rather than me trying to mimic in mm-hmm. around Europe, you know, or it, exactly. five yeah, earth turns. A, yeah. And that also that, and just the route, the evolution of Kendama, like it took me six mm-hmm. months to land my first lighthouse. 
Yes. And my first Straight Kodama up. was a Red TK-16. Super I was going to say, but... that's that's a thing, too, is like we were playing fucking TKs in Azores. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've got these fucking fatty cups and like fucking buttholes. And right, right, right. Yeah. Yep, paint. yep, yep. The bevel literally that you took me stick six your thumb into. Like... <laughs> six months to land a lighthouse, and now kids that are playing for six months are hitting quad tap, jug, late, late, late. Yeah. Jug, quad Dude, I mean, just th- th- yeah, like think about team. like how, <laughs> how stoked we were when we hit bird over the valley the first time. But now everyone's like, oh, like, yep. you, yeah. like I know the secret. You just fucking lick the bevel, right? <laughs> that's what it is, too, is so, like, people have faced... So I always tell people, like, when I'm teaching them Kendama or, like, showing them a new trick, that, like, the trick to Kendama, was, there is a trick to every trick. And the trick yeah. to Kendama is finding that trick. And mm. it's just, like, I always tell people, like, logically think about what you're doing with the Kendama. And every time you don't land it, don't just think of it as not landing. <laughs> but think of why you didn't land it. Like, what... Like, what are, like, the conditions that you need to meet to land this trick, and how can you make those conditions Dude. easier? Whether it's change yeah. your grip a little bit, or throw it like this, or hold it like this, or oh, put yeah. your finger there, and just little, tiny little things, and just Dude, try that is... everything. And it'll yeah. land once, and it'll just click, and you'll be like, yep, that that's it. so awesome. So, like, a couple weeks ago, I was trying to, like, hone in on, like, fast lighthouses, mm. and I was garbage at them. Couldn't do any of them. And then I, like, figured out what was, like, the trick, and now they're fucking, yeah. you know, I do them yeah. like that. And so, to me, it was like a... So when you're holding the can and you're going to the lighthouses, you have your all four of your fingers essentially on the can, like you're holding a can grip, and you have yeah. to put it on the tama and move your hand to the tama. Mm. So your hand being at your normal can grip is higher and more of a distance right, to travel right. to the tama. So yeah. if you're saying holding it with three fingers, your thumb, your index, and your middle finger, holding it under the slip ring, it's literally you're moving like an inch compared to right, like right, four right. or five inches. Yes. And that just makes it a million times easier. And another yeah. thing I was thinking was like, what what am I doing wrong? So like another thing that I always tell people too is like, think of what you're looking at. Are you looking at the right piece of the kendama? So me, yeah. I was looking at my ken, but I didn't need to look at my ken because it's in my hand. I'm not doing a flip. I know where it is. It's yeah. in my hand. And I kept like missing, putting it on the wrong spot on the tama. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? I'm looking at the ken. I need to start uh. looking at the tama. So I started looking at the tama and it was like literally clicked. And like I was banging them yeah, out yeah, left yeah. and right. <laughs> you're yeah. very uh you know thinking thinking about that again i was i was laughing because most people that i see maybe on instagram or you know when you when you see someone showing kendama for the first time everyone it seems like everyone's initial instinct is to swing the shit to big cup and we're all like yep. don't <laughs> swing it pull up and they're like okay yeah. and they fucking swing the shit <laughs> So I'm laughing so much because yeah. <laughs> awesome, like you're saying, like, stop and think about why you didn't land it. And I think that's the last thing on everyone's yeah. mind when everyone first starts Kendama. They just Straight keep on up. trying. They're like, fuck this stupid thing. Yeah. And they're not, they're not like logically thinking about not landing. They're just like, fuck, I didn't yeah, do yeah. it. Fuck, I didn't do it. And fuck, I, I didn't do it. And they just keep I doing it until the, they did it. And then there, there's, there's a big difference between like being able to do a trick and understanding yeah. a trick. Like, you could do yes. a trick, and you could have it. You could do it once, but you may not do it again for a long time. But if you fully understand a trick, then it's, I think you that, got it unlocked. I think that goes to how, how some people, most people look at Kendama. They see it as a toy, so they're like, why am I going to put any effort into this? Where if you see it as a sport, mm. then you're going to think about that kind of shit. Mm. About yeah. why you're not doing it. And, and I think that's yeah. a bit, that's, that might be, like, one of the big things that we need for, like, the Big Bang of Kendama. Yeah. So if you think of, like, the Big Bang, like, the Big Bang is what, like, started the universe. But for the Big Bang to happen, if it really did happen, there had to be a couple things there before right, to right, make right. it happen. So mm-hmm. currently, us sitting here at this table, everybody listening to Dominators, anybody that plays Kendama right now, you are that something before the Big Bang. And the Big mm-hmm. Bang is essentially, to me, is when it, Kendama gets to the point where every single person in the world knows exactly what it right, is, right, just right. like a yo-yo. Whether you have one, you play it, you know what it is. Yeah, or like and a I think, Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah, and I think competition is like that because even children, it's just like they want to compete. They want to be better than each other. They want to be able to look up to these professional athletes, which could be essentially right. us, you know? Yeah. And that just gives them that more drive, and that will feed them the passion that they need for Kendama to take them far and for, you know, to just yeah. spread Right, But in people. this case, it's those kids that are like better than the professionals. <laughs> but- yeah. <laughs> It's insane, yeah, wow. dude. It's, it's a crazy yeah, time. Yeah, but definitely, it is crazy, definitely like man. thinking about what your how your movement is and where your fingers are. Like you were saying, Austin, about moving your hand for fast for lighthouses and shit. Like uh, for me, I live in the same town as Sue Lab, so I'm really lucky because 
Sue is mm -hmm. always teaching people on how to play Kendama. And I've been, for the longest time, like, I almost give up on Lunars and Inward Lunars because I'm just like, they, it doesn't, it just doesn't work with me. So I'm like, I'm going to do other shit that I can have fun with. But just <laughs> some movements that he taught me of, like, how to hold it. Like, he's like, instead of holding the top, like, for Inward Lunars, for example, he's like, instead of holding it like you're doing a normal Lunar, because that's what I've always did. Point the whole No, he's away. like, he's like, hold yeah. your hand almost like palm up when you're holding the tama instead of okay. holding it with your palm facing mm. like uh from right handed so it's not it's not horizontal it'd be facing up and like doing yeah. doing that for me like definitely helped me out because my problem was i would always hand the shit i'd, I'd be like that it always bump into my yep. finger mm -hmm. but when i did that yeah it would land better and i felt more confident about like where the where the, hmm. the balance was so yeah and like i was saying it's just you're looking for the conditions that need to be met and you need to land it on the tama in an yeah, optimal spot yeah. for it to balance and holding it in the way that you were you weren't giving yourself that optimal right, right, right. landing yeah. so like what i tell people about doing inward lunars is they always hold it with their bevel pointing straight yeah. up and what yeah. happens is it can it will touch your finger and, and your it'll touch your index finger but it could still balance there so yeah. i tell people to turn their bevel yeah, out yeah looking like in yeah, front of yeah, them yeah. and that gives you so much more room and it puts your thumb closer but where your thumb is if it's touching your thumb it's going to tilt anyway so you exactly. don't need that space for your thumb and that was like that was what i figured out click for me with inward lunars you know yeah years ago. yeah but it's, it also goes to just having people who know that shit who can give you those 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 pointers yeah. mm -hmm. because in japan mm -hmm. i see plenty of people you know i'm playing kendama in front of people and everyone jokes oh you're better than japanese people at playing kendama and I'm like, Kendama is super easy as long as you have a teacher to show you, like, the little tricks. Yeah. All these Hell tricks yeah. are super simple. I like the way you word that when you say... Yeah, I like the way you word that when you say, like, um, that you have to find, like, the spot and, like, look at what you're doing wrong yeah. and shit like that. Because I've always, like, I don't say it in the same way, but I always say the same thing when I'm teaching as well. I usually mm -hmm. look at it as... I always talk about Kendama having a lot of like life lessons within it you know like it teaches you absolutely like not to give up it teaches you to like yep. look at the little details because if you don't then you're never going to figure out like where the fuck the like optimal spot is like you said right yeah and stuff like that so it's really cool I was gonna say too so even that just looking at it logically thinking about your failures and turning them into potential means for you to get closer to success like translate that to your normal life and it's, yeah i'll tell you right now firsthand experience it'll it'll go a long Hell, way yeah 100 percent wow like aside from just playing this fucking wooden toy and meeting all these people you know just mental why like my mentality is completely i mean i picked up kendama when i was 13 and i'm 24 now but even then like i thank kendama a lot for like my mental state and me always being so positive and just like having this specific outlook on life yeah you know mm -hmm. and i thank a lot of that yeah, to kendama yeah. hell yeah it's good because i think a lot of people you know a lot of the pros and stuff have that same kind of vibe and thought about kendama of you know just yeah it's it's positive positive push that out and it fucking will come back around don't worry you'll land it one yep. day yeah. yeah yep and that's what i always say too is like any trick like you might you might get a little away from this when you're doing like tap tap insta insta juggle juggle like a bunch of like yeah. new school stuff but any like single trick single motion i don't care how you good you are at kendama i don't care how many times you try it you yeah. can do it yeah you can land it put the time in eventually yeah. you will land it 100 percent. as long as you don't give up <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and there's, there's another quote that i always like that i think sweets actually posted on their story and it's like the master has failed more time than beginner yes 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 i yes. did see that one that's so fucking yeah, true that's a good quote. <laughs> you didn't try you didn't start let's do fucking go nowhere you can't do nowhere don't nothing it's yep, yeah absolutely. whoa whoa getting deep on the dominoes <laughs> episode one eight more about yeah. that deep hell yeah well, thank you so much, Austin, yeah, for all that, like one all that like, you know, information giving us uh, about the the Kendama World Cup, all those statistics to share that shit too. I'm really happy that you're you're open to share all of that. Anyone who absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, I will, like I said, I want the whole world to know because I want to see people go to the World Cup and I want to see people put up two thousand points. Yeah, 2, yeah. Points. Let's see. Yeah, dude. Who got it? Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. No, well, like you're only, saying, it's only up from here. What was the number you're saying that uh, what Rui had that in the last 23 seconds of his run, oh, the like points per second? Or something? 
It was like it, in, last, and it, in the last twenty three seconds, he scored three hundred forty five points, which gave him a PPS or a points per second of fifteen. Yeah. So, and you were yeah. saying so like that another, if, if he kept that up for the whole run, that you would get what was it like two thousand something? Twenty seven hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like that's fucking crazy. Well, like here's another one that'll blow your fucking mind right now. So I was saying, like between level eight and twelve, the trick with the highest trick value was the triple sling juggle. Okay. Triple sling. Yeah. Yeah. And that had a trick value of 66.66, which is essentially, you know, 66.6 yeah. points per second. Fucking, and yeah. I did the math, and if you did that for your full 180 seconds, you would score 11,998 points. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like I said, I don't <laughs> think there are enough I don't think there are enough tricks that have that high of a value to yeah, actually yeah. do that. Yeah. Because that is the only trick with that high value, but like that's the pace that you are at with doing mm. that trick in the first try. But the interesting thing with you bringing all this information out and giving it into people is that the tricks are chosen by the players. Like, Glowcan doesn't yeah. just pick tricks that they want to see. They ask us mm-hmm. to fucking film tricks for them, what we think should be worthy of being in the World Cup. So having yeah. this information, I would hope that people are going to take this into consideration when they're choosing a trick for World Cup, you know? So yeah. maybe, based off of that, there's going to be more tricks, like what you were saying with yours. With one this, motion. Like one yeah. motion, really quick. Yeah. More points per second, like you know, like more worth yep. like to it and shit like that. Rather than being like, Oh, I can do this big crazy fucking thirty second long combo. Right, you right, know? right. Yeah. Like, Let's be real, like single tricks are in a World Cup setting, they are a little more exciting than a combo. Because the combo yeah. I mean combo you have that like oh 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 but like <laughs> yeah. a single trick is just oh yes. Yeah, yes. totally. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, like, even just for not us, but for just for marketing and just, you know, getting other people into it, like, I feel like that gives more excitement to it to just, oh, you totally. know, have just yeah. banger after banger after banger instead of one trick that may take you 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, exactly. And that was why they introduced the bonus points this year, right, for the higher level mm-hmm. tricks, because they wanted people to be doing the higher level tricks on stage yeah. so that yeah. the, for the audience and stuff, you know, so that you can and see And it's crazy, too, because when I heard about that at first, I was like, whoa, I don't know about that. 194 going from 100 points to a level 10 to 194 and level 12. I don't know. That might yeah. be too big of a jump. But That's then what after I was I looked saying. Up, and then after I looked at the trick values, like I said, like there are more level 10s that are worth more than yeah, level yeah. 12s. So like and, they, they did it right. That's cool. I'm stoked on that because when they were talking about implementing that, I was like, I've been living in Matsumoto. So I was there yeah. like talking to them about it and they were asking me what I thought. And I thought that 30 and 50 was way too high. Yeah, me too. I, I really was like, I don't know, because like, that's a lot of points. Yeah. Like, I know? literally thought people would be going up there and just doing only level yeah. 12s. I thought so too. Like, I really Even did. then this year, there really weren't a lot attempted like at all. Like, no, there were, yeah. like Leod's trick was attempted by a lot of people. And then other mm-hmm. than that, like I can't even think of any of the level 12s that were really attempted off the top of my head, besides obviously the tightrope from my yeah, 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 the tightrope. I mean, Misu tried her trick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that only, was that was a flex. Misu. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a that's a classic yeah. Misu flex, man. But uh, yeah, the tight the tight rope just brought me to another thing that I wanted to bring up. So uh, Maharu's yeah. run, right? Yeah. First trick, tight rope, 194 yep. points off the bat. Yeah. And uh, he scored 1144. He had mm-hmm. he landed 20 tricks. So 1144 minus that 194 gives him about uh, I'm doing this off the top of my head, you know, 990, 990 mm-hmm. points minus yeah. 194. Something like that, around there, yeah. under a thousand, and uh, no, nine fifty actually. Yeah, he and yeah, yeah. He would have had nine fifty without that one level twelve. So if you just pretend like he didn't hit that level twelve and moved on, yeah. he would have scored nine hundred fifty points with nineteen Whoa. tricks, and would have got like yeah. tenth place. And that one high level trick bumped him all the way up yeah. to top yeah, five. He got fifth. Crazy. Yeah. Hmm. And like even if you look too, if you look at like I don't have the uh, the full scores uh, in front it. of me, but like if you just look at any of any of the runs and you take like the thirteenth play person and you throw in one level True. twelve, one hundred ninety four, yeah. then they yeah. bump up Johnny. far. They go far. Yeah, Johnny, number thirteen. I remember a couple years ago when I made finals, I got the Canadian wild card and I did Kevin DeSoto's trick on stage the the two turn swap candle double candle yep. flip nice. trade spike. But yeah, as I good. spiked, as I spiked, it was the only time I had ever tried that trick. I never fucking <laughs> practiced it. This, and I just, I don't know what came over me. I decided to just huck it on stage. I pulled a Rui, I guess. Mm. And fucking, when I spiked it, I literally like, I, I spiked it, but this can just slipped out of my hands and mm. just fucking went ah. and I just like, ah, so I didn't get points for it. And But if so I, I broke had, my TV. yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> 
But um, so if I had gotten that, I got I got thirty fifth when it with like a, a, in the end I got thirty fifth I think or thirty second, thirty second, thirty second. And if I had gotten it, I would have been up to like twenty twenty fifth or something like that. And that was like I don't remember exactly, but it was something like that. And that was before the fifty bonus points for level twelve, right? Mm. Yeah. So that's the, you're right. That is huge. It's, it's, it's crazy. And like another one too to put into perspective of like the lower level tricks comparing them to higher levels. So uh, Nick's first minute, he landed nine tricks for two hundred ninety points, and his mm -hmm. second minute he landed three tricks for two twenty six. Level eight and a nine and a nine. And if he did land another level eight, he would have had two ninety in his first minute as well as his second minute. And watching mm -hmm. Nick's run the first minute, you're like, damn, he's home, yeah. he's killing it. And if you yeah. watch his second minute run, you're like, damn, right. he's kind of botching right now. Not botching, yeah. but like we've all seen Nick compare right. at right. his best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so like, you know, him putting in, if he landed one more level eight, that would have been given him two ninety in the second minute, like I said, which would equal his first minute score. And yeah. his performance in the first minute looks by far better than his score in the second minute, but it's just it doesn't translate. Mm. Mm. So those, you know, not landing as many tricks but doing more of the higher level ones is just is just proof right here that like Yeah, the higher level okay. tricks. Yeah, straight you up. You could use some of them to get you in that little hone zone, but like I was saying before, you don't need to be in as much of a hone zone if you're not trying to shoot for a 60% success rate. Yeah. Right, totally. man. So I guess more than like more than using them as like a hone in kind of thing, I feel like it might be better to like like you're saying go for the high level tricks. But then like we all have those moments where you just like you miss shit and then if you're on stage and you start missing, you like get nervous yep. and then you're like fuck, yep. fuck, fuck. That's when you start throwing in the low level tricks to boost yep. yourself back up to where yep. you already were and then and start even, hucking the big ones again. Uh, and even that same thing is like putting yourself in that hone zone is doing a bunch of level lower level tricks, getting yourself in the hone zone. All it takes is for you to miss one spike to take you right out of that mind right, state right. and being like, fuck shit. Straight and up. like that yeah. just missing a little falling in could just de delete everything that you just did for the past yeah. 45 seconds lacing yeah. a bunch yeah, of small tricks. Or even a fucking string tangle or something like that. Yep, oh, exactly. Could yeah. even do, Dude, yeah. yeah, yeah, That's the kind of cool thing about Kendama. It's, it's like so unpredictable, despite how much mm -hmm. effort you put into it, despite how like honed you are. Like you never know if like you know the strings just gonna come around the wrong way this time, or mm -hmm. like your a hands a little slippery, or yeah, or something. It could be fucking anything. You get mm -hmm. something in your eye, or fucking you had to <laughs> fart or some shit. Like, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Could be One of the things I I do is I always try to take a pre comp dump. <laughs> so like we'll be dump. at like we'll be at like an event and like I'll be like oh open starting in like an hour like I gotta make sure I go take a shit because I don't want to be like on stage and be like damn I'm by, I gotta really take a shit right now and then, like, you know <laughs> so I always I always try and get out that oh, pre comp man, dump just clear out the system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's a absolutely. good strat. I like that. I like that. <laughs> It's a little bit tough at the KWC venue yeah. with that sweaty ass fucking squatty potty. Yeah. Oh, man. I'll see you but... at Naco in the toilets an hour before <laughs> open. <laughs> yeah. Meet you in there for a game of battle. You're shirts. telling everyone about there, man. There's going to be a line. Everybody's going to be trying to shit before <laughs> right? now. Get in there early. Bring your laxatives. <laughs> yeah, early. to KWC. <laughs> I don't Bring know about that one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little sketch. That's definitely a little sketch. Oh man! Then, then you're definitely gonna be on stage thinking like, "Wow, I definitely shouldn't have eaten that second laxative." <laughs> Thought it wasn't uh, kicking in the first round, so I <laughs> took that second pill. Yeah. I'm excited for Nako though. Are you guys going this year? I should be there. I will yeah. not. Hanging out in Japan. <laughs> I I refuse to miss it this year. I was pissed I didn't go last year, so. That's that's me with World Cup next year. Is I went the past two years, and this is my first time in three years not going. And I was like, "I'll be okay. I'll be okay." Mm. But, yeah, just watching it from home, it's like, I don't know if I can miss another yeah. World Cup. Yeah. It's, it's it interesting. Was... This year, there wasn't as many, like, a lot of the people who usually come, like, all mm -hmm. the time didn't come this yes. year. And it was a lot less foreigners and shit. It was interesting. Yeah. I, I think a large part of that was, I don't know how many people, but there was a good chunk of people that chose to go to the Copenhagen catch and flow style yeah. rather mm -hmm. than coming to Japan to World Cup again. And I think yeah. part of that is not only is Copenhagen dope and like that's a whole new thing, but the KWC is always the same thing. It's always in the same place. We're yeah. always going to Miyajima. Right. We're always staying in the same yep. hostel. And so I think people get a little bit bored of it. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. a little bit. But that being said, I've been to all of them and I just love it every even more right, every time. Right. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like 
I don't know. It's like you just learn more about the space. Like you get to go different places. Like rather than go to this beach, you go to another beach. Or like rather than go to this restaurant, you go to this one. Or like you go for a yeah. walk and find new shit. Like it's kind of cool. Like so I don't know. And even Anybody like it's who's funny too. If you're thinking it's boring, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, dude. Well, I've but said it's funny too because like you were saying like. People are like, uh, like, oh, it's the same thing over and over again. But this year, like, you didn't have the ceremony at the shrine. You didn't have Miyajima Island. It wasn't like a set thing. So it like almost was different the exactly. year that people were like, it's not different. I'm not going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and this was the first year that it wasn't like sweltering fucking right, hot. Right. And, like, oh, my God. I was so jealous. Because yeah, in New York, it was so Oh, hot. shit. And I was yeah. like, fuck, every year I leave New York to go to this excruciating heat and then this year i don't leave new york <laughs> and it came to me yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but seriously i mean like i'm one that always but. says that it, it is a little boring because it is the same thing but mm-hmm. like mm. it, i think that is going to i don't know for the people who who are either really wanting to place well who take the competition a little more seriously than they should it maybe because for me i didn't compete at all my third time going, I didn't first time not competing, and I, it might have been the best one because I didn't have any of that stress. I was able to relax and just hang yep. out. Yeah, and just enjoy and take yeah. in everything. Yeah, hell yeah. So man. that's what it's up. That's like I never take this shit seriously because I have way too much fun hanging out right, with everyone right. and shit. And for me, it's like it's a gathering of the homies. You know, like yep. yeah, it's a competition, and yeah, we have a chance to like crown a new world champion right. and like. It's a good thing to celebrate and all and there's a lot of work put yeah. into that and a lot of people like you said take it very seriously and really put like a lot of work into it but that's not what it is for me and that's not what i think it should yeah. be about on absolutely the whole, you know like even like whenever i come home from like a competition i'm like talking to family members and like oh i just got back from you know say nashville for a kendama competition they're like oh how'd you do did you win i was like no i didn't win they're like oh it's okay though and i'm like no like i don't care yeah, about yeah. winning like yeah that yeah, would be a totally. big plus yeah, but like yeah. that's not yeah, why yeah. i go exactly yeah and i think it's interesting yeah, it's I've, just... I've heard from um nobu talking about how stress is big nobu the, uh, well kendama usa <laughs> nobu and he gotcha. was he's talking about how once he got sponsored by kusa the stress level like skyrocketed when he was in any competition so mm. i think that yeah. also you know comes with with the territory of being sponsored Unless, unless yeah, you're Rod. This is the thing. Like, <laughs> unless a you're lot of, Rod. A lot of people like, aren't <laughs> great at competing. Yes. Like, there are some of the best players true. in the world that don't yes, win yes. comps. Yeah, that's very true. It's a whole new world yeah. on stage. Yeah, it's different. It's completely different. And like it's this, it's no different than like we've talked about skateboarding in the past too, about how mm-hmm. now it's getting in the Olympics yep. and people are like not really stoked about it because of like, for them, that's not what skateboarding is yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. I feel like I'm like one of those people, but with Kendama, where like Kendama is cool because you can compete and competitions are fun and shit, but like, that's not what it's about for me. Like, I don't, I don't fucking give a shit about the competitions, to be honest. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm there to hang out with the homies and to fucking just play some Dom. Like, I don't, that's it. Hundred yeah. percent agree with you, but even you at know? the same time, it's almost like a beautiful thing that like we think that way, but not everybody thinks that way, and like they have a way to be like this is why yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it. Yeah, you know? exactly. And it's and like it really does yeah. just make it a thing for everybody. Yeah, man, that's fucking it's a beautiful thing. Because not everybody is as passion driven with Kendama as you know people like us are. Some of the people listening. Yeah. Or maybe they just haven't figured that part of it out yet, and they just think it's yeah. all about the competition and all about fucking doing this. 18 tap fucking swap down fast bullshit yeah yeah, yeah. gotta say I'm, I'm, I'm over the taps once you got past 10 I was like you officially unlock the infinite tap don't show me another one until you get 100 <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like with juggles man do you remember when juggles yeah. like, were starting oh, to be man. a thing yep. and then there was like the 100 juggles to spike and shit like that and it was just like okay I get it I'm not gonna watch that video yeah you can do yeah. it yeah, yeah. Look. the one I would watch though is Ace's 2000 <laughs> earth turns I'd watch that one anytime <laughs> That's if, you, if you watch that whole video, yeah, right, it's like an hour long or some shit. <laughs> it's like yeah, a fifteen-minute so, video of just Earth turns. Yeah, just to be clear, I'm not claiming that I did. <laughs> I'm saying I would. Right. I would scan through it. Maybe I would watch the whole yeah, thing. Dude, sometime. Absolute maniac. Yeah, dude. Like I always I think about like how many time. would he be able to get if he like grinded that? Because I heard that like when he does that, he starts the camera, just goes. That's like first attempt. 
Yeah. And then, like, if he doesn't do it, he shuts it off and just stops playing. Totally. But, like, what if he, that. like, sat there for, like, five hours a day and, like, tried to do oh, man. the most? Like, you know. Who knows, man? His fucking hand I mean, would fall off. I don't think I, I guess... could do that much. I don't think I could do that many big cups. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, you know? like, technically, if you look back, but even before that was done, like, Moshikame was the thing, yeah, and still yeah, is the yeah. thing in Japan. It's like, how many Moshikame can you right. do, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's infinite. Like, people can, like, Tomotsu was the first person to ever do it for eight hours right. straight. Yeah. You know? And he must like, have taken a shit before that. Imagine? <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah, say, you need a freedom for that definitely one. Definitely <laughs> a freedom for that one. <laughs> He even like he said he like pissed while he was doing it like he what? I think he had, like a I think he got God. like a five he, he no, lived. no 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 <laughs> I, yeah. I think he had like a, yeah <laughs> I'm pretty sure they gave him like a five minute break every couple hours or something yeah. like that that's fair I, I I don't remember what it was but just like so you can go take a piss yeah. and just like yeah. your arm doesn't right, fall right. off but but when he was eating he was eating while he was doing much like just one hand that's doing insane. much like. Grabbing Should it on me. With the other, yeah, yeah. Like just like, smoothies. Just a fucking sword, one of those Brazilian swords with like a fucking big ass hunk of meat on it, just off the barbecue. Just fucking. I don't know. Like I gotta fucking say too, Luffy. It's one of my shit. favorite like, sounds ever is a Moshe Kame battle at a big competition. It's one of the best. Yeah, sounds ever. it's so good. Just hundreds of clicks yeah, yeah. and clacks. And... It's so fucking sick. Hell yeah, just going. <laughs> Love it. Those are always fun, man. Yeah, it's just interesting, man. All this like progression and like seeing like, you know, like like we just said, like starting with like how many mochikamas can you do? What? Well, how many juggles can you do? How many earth turns can you do? How many taps yeah. can you do? Like, what the mm-hmm. fuck is next? <laughs> you know, I mean, so how many? I do like, want to see J-sticks? though is spike taps, and I've been saying it. Mm. Spike taps twenty nineteen. Spike taps twenty nineteen. Yeah, they did become a big thing this year, and I want to Hell see yeah. people do a ten spike tap because me, Oof. that's not achieved yet. You know, you could do a ten tap, you could do a yeah. hundred tap. I haven't yes. seen anybody unlock the infinite yeah, spike no. top yet. That's fucking, that's yeah. some shit. And they're tech, because it's not as much of a tap. Shit it's like bounces touch. back so yeah, fast. Yeah, because the spike has like a little flex to it, so it like gives yep. it a little like, like bouncy yeah. and shit. Yeah, I, I mean, Taki, Takuya. Taps. Yeah, I'm not good at them, Takuya's but I like has been them. honing in and getting pretty sick at those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. control. Yeah. Going back and forth between the base tap and the spike tap. It's nutty. It's so, so fucking much more tech, gentle man. too, because like if you hit it too hard, it'll affect it so much more than if you hit it right yeah, tap yeah. too hard. Yeah, oh. totally. No, oh, there's watch. Kendama has gotten so technical lately, man. Right. With like Probably. that kind of shit, or like the like the barrel roll, like to lighthouse to insta lunar kind of Ooh, stuff. Like I don't yeah, know. Did you guys yeah, see yeah, Ben Harold's yeah. trick recently? His recent trick, yes, I yeah. did. Oh my god, dude! I don't even remember what it was. I just remember the barrel roll and just being like, "What the fuck, right. Ben?" <laughs> yeah, it's like, such a good motion with like most that's like 90 percent of ben harold tricks i see them and i don't yeah. really know what happened but my mind is like coming out of my yeah fucking ears. yeah fuck. <laughs> well i'm gonna put my fucking sure headphones in before my brain melts out for fuck's sake <laughs> well like yeah uh, kendama's being turning into something is more tech and now now we got more numbers more statistics alongside thanks to austin's research that he's been yeah. putting down we definitely i'm like you were saying rod excited to see how the pros approach uh giving new tricks for next year because if everyone just gives out mm-hmm. solid single motion bangers then it's it's gonna be popping off next year on on that, yeah, on that final stage yeah i mean absolutely in that sense it's up to all of us to help push the scores right not just the people who are making like making that score like nick and Rui and so and those guys right. but it's up to us choosing the tricks, which is all of us. Yeah. yeah. 120 of us, at least. <laughs> and, like, even yeah. me, like, when I was filming with Coda, like, I, I didn't know if I was going to the World Cup or not this year, which I ended up not going. But I was, like, when I was filming the tricks, I was thinking in my head, like, I want to land tricks that would benefit me, that, like, I could go and use and already kind of have that on lock before I even have right, to Right, right, right. Yeah. And, like, that might be, like, almost like a cheaty advantage, but if everybody has that that mentality going into filming tricks then it's, yeah. it's not an advantage i mean pretty you know? much that's what everyone film a does trick that's like this will help yeah but like there are even tricks where like some people filmed a trick and i was like i know for a fact you're not even gonna try that on the world cup stage <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. You I know? Mean, like, i'm i'm a prime example oh man i just like i've always just like when they want me to film a trick i just like in the past the first few years it was always like this is just a cool yeah trick dude your I monkey like. taps like, some of the tricks those. that ended up in the 
Yeah, yeah. There's been a couple of good ones, but like, there's been some that were literally just tricks that I thought of, and I was like, oh, I'm getting close to this. And Hajime was just like, well, can I film you? I'm like, yeah, you can film me. Hell yeah. And then it turns out that that trick ended up in the fucking World Cup. Yeah. And I was like, well, why, dude? That, that trick has no place in the World Cup. <laughs> what was yeah. it? It was like, uh, the trick was, I think it was Moon Circle Swap to Lunar, and then from Lunar, like, Pop Swap, like, Pressure Down Bird. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was and, last year? No, this was in like 2015. It oh, was a while man. ago. It was the year I, I had like, I'd, I'd I had like three or trick. four tricks in that year. And that was one of them. And I was just like, why? Like, I'm not even going to try it. And that's like my <laughs> like, yeah. you know. But uh, even like this year, my trick was like a hard trick. I've been pretty honed at the first part up until recently. It's funny, man. Like, I'll film these tricks and I'll be like really honed at at least the first part, you know. But then, like, once it's in the list and shit, and I'm, like, practicing for Cup, and, like, Cup comes around, like, I can't fucking do it to save my life. Man. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? It's fucking strange. It's hard, strange, too, man. because you go to Japan, and, like, some tricks that you were honing on just don't work anymore. Like, Kandamas play different in Japan. Yeah, well, just, and, everything like, feels I different. I had, like, your body like feels my different. set runs, and, like, it, I took out a couple of my lunar tricks. He was like, my hands are way too sweaty in Japan to be lacing these fat lunar tricks. Yeah, man. And I threw in, like, a trick, like, last minute, like, the night before. I was like, fuck, okay, let me just throw in this Yuki Yao level 10 just because I don't yeah. think I'll be able to do that lunar because my hand yeah. is ready. And that's a hard thing, too, is just, like, last minute changing shit. Like, yeah. I do that every year, and I did that again this year. I fucked myself. I put some shit yeah, on there, and I've, I'm just I've, like... I've already... Why, Rod? What were you thinking? Yeah. Like, I've, I've already why? told myself that yeah. when I go back next year, not if, but when I go back next year, yeah. I'm just going to stick to my shit and know any of those thoughts of like potentially changing my list, just yeah. delete that from my brain. Just yes. do the tricks I'm comfortable with. Yeah. This is like, for me, it's worked out in the past. The year that I made the finals was because I randomly threw the trip UFO in there and I mm-hmm. fucking smacked it <laughs> with like three seconds left in the round. And I just happened to fucking hit. I'm not good at that trick by any means. I just happened yeah. to fucking fluke out and get it. And that Even was that what one, though, gave like, me the push and got and, But it, that's a quick one, right? So yeah, yeah like, so I was saying that's a trick with high trick value because you could put in like five attempts in the time that it would take you to do one attempt on a longer trick. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that was the year that they introduced the backup tricks too. So like mm-hmm. I also had some shit to save my ass if I didn't get it, right? Yeah. So. It's interesting. It's, it's funny because that was one of the tricks I had on lock for my prelim runs, and I did it. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I stole your trip UFO, but I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. Take it. It's all yours. Yeah. Fuck. That was some good was shit. Good. Well, man, I'm like, I'm hyped on all this, like, different, like, perspective on, like, how to approach right, this right. shit. I'm, like, really Absolutely. hyped to see, like, how people take this and what people right. do with it because it's some really powerful knowledge yeah I think. yeah yeah because like i said like i have a degree in math but i mean i, I was one of those where like these get degrees. <laughs> yeah yeah so, barely passing like, started <laughs> going away from like numbers and started getting into like mathematical theory and like all that kind of stuff like it just went way over my head and i know there's yeah. plenty of people out there that actually knew yeah. their shit <laughs> and did it so like uh do you guys know finn pounds nope. I don't believe he's I do. He's from Massachusetts, but uh, yeah, he's a homie, and uh, he's also in school for math right now, and when he started playing Kendama, he created, like, a mathematical sequence to, like, how to Whoa. play Kendama, Whoa. and, like, I don't even, like, get it. Like, he's tried to show me before, and it just goes way over my head, but it's, like, literally a mathematical whatever he calls it of, like, written out on paper, like, this is Kendama. These numbers are Kendama. That's crazy. And That's, like... Wild. The only thing that makes me think of is Josh. Josh has that book, and he has like he put a number on every cup, and it's not like yep. an equation, but it's like a sequence of numbers that like yeah. spells out how to do like, for example, around Europe or like yeah. whatever, right? But yeah, I've I've heard about that. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Is hmm. it's interesting? I'm sure that those two would somehow correlate together in some way. Man, make the yeah. fucking universe explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too much <laughs> right? <kidama. No> overload. <laughs> Whoa, shit. shit. Well, we have, uh, you know, another year to, to wait until we see what, mm-hmm. what these these fruits ripen out to be. Yeah, yes, for do. 2020. I mean, but this, this, like, now is when it starts, like, the film grind, right? Like, when Coda starts going to events and starts filming for next year. So now is when you want to start thinking about those right? tricks. Mm-hmm. High value, quick. 
single motion. It's going to be an interesting year next year. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see that if they do change like the style of tricks and do more tricks that are shorter, because like people not, might not all be filming shorter tricks, but like are they going to maybe pick shorter right. tricks now? Or yeah. like maybe they'll look at the trick values and be like, oh, we need more short tricks as level 11s. Yeah. Ooh. Hmm. Who knows? Like Who that. knows? Maybe we'll have to... And that'll be able to almost like help them too in deciding where each trick yeah. fits. Yeah, but it's interesting too because like with that like that level ten, the ten juggle spike, that's not a very hard trick. It's like not. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure everybody tried yeah. that trick. Yeah. But uh, the time it takes. It's like high potential for fucking like it's high risk because it's a high potential for fuckery with like your string mm-hmm. or like whatever you know. It's ten juggles like it's not. And it's just like, a very frustrating trick. Exactly, Super yeah, and it takes time, and like, so, like, difficulty-wise, I don't, like, nobody thinks it has any place in level 10, but the fact that it takes mm-hmm. up that much time is what puts it up that right, level, right. right? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's know, also another way to look like, at it. Like, we were talking about how, like, and you guys have talked about how that trick does take so long, and one attempt takes so long, but if you have 10 jug on lock, you could do it right. in five seconds. You could do that's it in right, six right. seconds compared to, like... The stilt flip, stilt barrel, stilt tray, that could take yeah. you like 30 seconds if you're sitting there balancing a stilt. Yeah, and like taking your time exactly, with it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like if you're honed on your jug, you could bang yeah. that out in five seconds and it's just as quick as. Most I remember of the other during tricks. the prelims, I, I watched Nick do like hit that 10 jug first tee. Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. He's like, all right, just get this out. He probably also did the stilt one. No, first he didn't. That one took him shit. a while, a little bit, but he did get it in the end. Yeah. But, but, oh man, oh man, Nerding Out Hard, Domino Nerds, episode 1-8, recap, full uh, yeah, number yeah. statistic recap of 2019's Kendama World Cup. Thanks, Austin, for, for sharing mm-hmm. this information again with yeah. everyone. Thank you guys yeah, for having me. Definitely. It was, oh yeah, man. It was Absolutely. good to, to share all this information. Hopefully people who weren't able to catch... Or understand fully all the information that was that you were talking about while you're sitting on your shitter through IG. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, they got a little better information now. That was a funny thing too. Is uh, the sweets they they cut out the end where like and yes, by the way, I'm shitting. Out. <laughs> <laughs> right, because he was. If you were following Austin, oh, fuckers, you got the real stuff. Should've you got the real it. deal. The real smell stench. Hell yeah, the real stench. <laughs> but. So this this one, everyone, might be the last uh, Kenjama World Cup-themed episode. We'll come back with our next episodes. Usual, me and Raj just fucking yeah. around, maybe getting some uh, new guests mm. on, talking about shit. Yeah. That being said... Well, yeah. I think I think I mentioned before, this is my last day oh, in Japan oh, hey. for living here for a while. So I'm wow, moving back to Canada voyage. tomorrow. Morning. Like right now, it's 1 o'clock. Well, it's almost 2 yep. o'clock now. I'm leaving at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Is I'm going to be at the airport, Ooh. and I'm getting on a Rise fucking plane. Going back to Canada for Van Jam, which is going to be sick. And then I'm staying in Vancouver for the foreseeable future until I make plans to come back, because I definitely want to come back and live here All somewhere. right, all right. But that, that being said, how that is relevant to what we were just talking about is that I'm going to be in Canada, so there's going to be a whole fresh cast of people that will be at my disposal to Hell's record yeah. with. So. I'm we'll excited. definitely have some. Oh guests. right! Oh definitely. right! Yeah, we're gonna guests. get more guests, more people. It, it's gonna be good. Say bon voyage to Rod's Japan. Uh, yep, yep. One year stint. It's not over. <laughs> but it was not a good stint because this is the you know this is when we started Dominators. This is when it was Hell born. Yeah. Land of, land of the fucking rising Beautiful. sun. Land of the Kendama. Land of the Dominators. Now forever. Land of the <laughs> nerd. <laughs> If you want to help support the Dominards, you can do so by checking out our Patreon page, the Kentertainment. There's a lot of different perks that you guys can check out. Uh, you get some cool stuff, shirts. There's a Dama raffle giveaway, and you have the option, or the you know you can give us questions that we will definitely feature on Dominards for future episodes. So check that shit out, uh, or just support us by following us on Instagram, sharing all this content that we're making. Uh, and just you know giving the word out spreading the love spreading spreading out th- fucking thick too just like when you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich fucking make that shit thick oh yeah that fatty crunchy peanut butter layers <laughs> and check out definitely everyone uh check out austin austin what's your ig at austin donovan simple as that Super go simple. also check out uh the the yeah. competition that's coming up 
and the East Coast. Beast of the, the East. Coast, of the East. Beast of the East. September 21st, Washington Square Hell Park. Yeah. That's More like decently close, decently close to Naco too. Naco, Naco, however the Naco? fuck you say yeah, it. Yeah, fairly close. So I always say it twice like... every time because Naco just sounds so funny to me. It just comes out. I've been saying Naco. <laughs> yeah, Naco sounds better, but I, I don't for whatever reason I like Naco. saying Naco. It's is more it, like that, like it? goofy Canadian. Exactly. Accent, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Why. And all, yeah. I still kind of call it MKO. <laughs> yeah. I want to go to MKO this year. <laughs> yeah, MKO. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's not going to fully make the transition to Naco until we're. At yes. Naco. Yes. Yeah, then it'll be it's inevitable. Crowned. <laughs> or the the Murica Kindama yeah. Open. Still keep it MKO, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what I was saying is it's really close. The Beast of the East is real close to MKO. So maybe there's just some potential for a quick little hop over to New York before hopping over to Minnesota. It's not that far. Man. There you go. Yeah, yeah if you're going, coming from south, you could hit me on the way up more north to Minnesota. There you go. Beautiful. And uh, also, uh, the only person that I do know already that is flying out to come to the event, Kevin DeSoto, will be there. Nice. Ooh. KG. Yes, sir. Nice. And you could also just come and check out New York City, which I'm sure a lot of you have exactly. not done yet. It's in the middle oh, yeah. of Manhattan. So, I mean, yeah, we're, you'll be right in the right, chaos. Right, right. Right in the fucking chaos. city. <laughs> it's, a sick, it's a sick city to walk around. That's for damn sure. It's definitely yeah. fun. There's a lot of excitement around going on. Hell yeah. Cool. Well, I think that we're pretty much reaching the, the daily nerd limit. I yeah, think, yeah. Now. It's looking like we've been nerding out for... For about an hour and a half, you're getting yep, close yep. to. It's a good time for our guest mm-hmm. episodes. Yes, yes. So, again, thanks, Austin, Hells for coming yeah. out and schooling all of the nerds. Right. Dropping those Absolutely. that math yeah, knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Using Hell that yeah. degree. Fuck yeah. Yeah, keep up the good work. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Always. Keep up the good work with those stats, bud. <laughs> and Will I guess do. on that note, that's it. Fucking nerds are out. Out.